2023, terrifying alien invaders stalk the New York City streets. Only you can prevail wielding the super soldier enhancements of Nano Suit 2. Gamerspawn is here to count down to the release of Crisis 2. Four days left. The world has been ravaged by a series of climatic disasters and society is on the verge of total breakdown. Now the aliens have returned with a full invasion force bent on nothing less than the total annihilation of mankind. Starting by trying to rip the heart out of Earth's most iconic city. Crisis 2 takes place in 2023, three years after the original game. But what happened in the meantime? Gamer Spawn connects the dots from Crisis and Crisis Warhead together to explain why New York City is about to collapse from not only a huge alien invasion, but also the creators of the nanosuit, Crynet Systems. In the original Crisis game, you follow Lieutenant Jake Dunn, also known as Nomad, an operator at the United States Army Delta Force. As Crisis begins, a team of archaeologists sent on behalf of the United States Army are taken captive by the North Korean Army, just as they are making a very important discovery in the South China Sea that would change life on Earth forever. The United States responds quickly by deploying a team of special ops supported by the USS Constitution who take part in the war between the United States and North Korea. It becomes apparent that the North Koreans have constructed huge military installations. Early on in the game, it becomes clear that the Korean People's Army isn't the most dangerous threat, as members of the Special Forces teams suddenly disappear, later to be found dead. When the Special Ops Major, Lawrence Barnes, commonly known as Prophet, gets captured by the unknown force, and there's only two members left in the Special Forces team, the United States Army enters the scene to fight off the Koreans, but soon find themselves also fighting an unknown alien species. At the end of the first section, the mountain at the center of the island begins to crumble, revealing a two-kilometer-high alien structure beneath the surface. Nomad enters the alien ship in this section and begins to explore the weightless environment, retrieving valuable information about the alien invaders who periodically attack him. Nomad escapes the island and makes his way to the USS Constitution. On board, the Admiral reveals he has permission to commence a nuclear assault on the island in an attempt to wipe out the aliens. At this time, Prophet steals a VTOL and returns to the island to fight the aliens. However, the nuke, upon detonating on the surface of the sphere, only gives it more power. And it expands, and an army of aliens arrive to attack the USS Constitution. The final battle takes place against a giant alien warship on top of the ship. Nomad destroys the alien ship, causing it to crash onto the USS Constitution, sinking both into the sea. Nomad manages to jump ship onto the VTOL transport with Psycho and Helena Rosenthal on it. Shortly after this, a radio transmission from Prophet is received, and Nomad insists upon going back to the island to join him. Running parallel to this game is Crisis Warhead. It primarily centers on Psycho capturing a nuclear materials container, which contains an alien, although it is disabled and did not self-destruct. Most of the game centers on attempting to capture this crate and bring it out of the island. It changes hands many times between Psycho and Colonel Lee throughout the game until finally, at the end, Psycho and Sean O'Neill bring it off the island on a VTOL seemingly without pursuit. Psycho fights through the jungle and coastlines against the North Korean military to track down the container and stop them from taking it. After he reaches a cargo submarine, he sees what's inside. Rather than a nuclear warhead, the container houses an alien war machine, which knocks Psycho out with an imp blast. After he wakes up again, he is captured and tortured by the North Koreans. As the submarine submerges, the island is suddenly flash-frozen while mechanical alien exosuits attack. Psycho pursues Colonel Lee through the frozen waters and valleys, eventually meeting up with another nanosuit team on the island, Eagle Team. Emerging above ground, Psycho fights off both North Korean soldiers and aliens trying to reclaim the container. 
O'Neill assisting him. Psycho is ordered to destroy the container if he cannot capture it. Before the container can be extracted by friendly forces off the bridge where the train stopped, Colonel Lee arrives and uses a captured U.S. Marine as a hostage to bait Psycho off the train. The Marine begs Psycho to drop him so Psycho can retrieve the detonator and detonate the explosives. Colonel Lee manages to escape with the container before the explosives can be detonated. Although Psycho survives the fall, the Marine, who was not wearing an armored nanosuit, is not so lucky. He takes out his rage on an injured North Korean nanosuit soldier he pulled off the bridge with him and drowns him in the river. Struck with grief for not saving the life of the Marine, Psycho has an emotional breakdown, but regains his composure in order to finish his mission. Throughout the game, audio clips from four years before the game takes place are heard. These clips show brief glimpses into how O'Neill failed his evaluation test. The final clip reveals a brief conversation between Psycho and Nomad at the end of Nomad's own successful evaluation. Psycho asks Nomad if he's okay, to which Nomad replies, Did you disarm the warhead? Psycho does not reply to the question, instead saying, That's my Nomad, always putting the mission first. And so it ends. Now that the North Korean army has been defeated, the Lingshan Islands nuked, it's time to fight for humanity fight for freedom and fight for New York. Be sure to watch the next episode when we're going to talk about the storyline and facts of Crisis 2. The nano suit is the future of our feeble species. And only you can finish what I started over a century ago.